an ancient Indian jungle. Predators. for survival begins. India, ten times more densely populated than the United States. On average, nearly 400 people in every square kilometer. But away from the cities, beyond the crowds, lies a world rarely glimpsed by outsiders. the jungles of central India. They date back millions of years. Today, large areas still remain intact. This is home to some of the most varied wildlife in India. Bears to boars, monkeys to mongoose, from the forest floor to the treetops, the smallest species to the largest. This is Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book made flesh and blood. Home to arguably the Earth's most beautiful killer, the Bengal tiger. A solitary hunter that combines power and stealth to kill with one bite. But they are not the only threat here. It's the beginning of the dry season. There will be no rain for four months. Temperatures will peak at 46 degrees. Water will become scarce. Prey will be forced to take more and more risks just to survive.
at a water hole in the heart of the jungle, the area's dominant male patrols his territory. Battle-scarred, powerful and fearless, he will defend this patch with his life. Water holes are the preferred hunting grounds for tigers, and this is the biggest for kilometers around, attracting the most prey. It is also the only one which will not completely dry up in the coming months. This is a prime spot for an ambush, and he controls it. He drinks what he wants, when he wants. A rare privilege amongst jungle animals. He weighs around 220 kilograms and is eight years old. Male tigers rarely rule for more than three years, and this is the second of his short but glorious reign. Scent marking announces to other tigers that this is still his kingdom. His roars advertise his whereabouts to females, but also warn other males to stay away. These calls are at such a low frequency, they resonate through trees, spreading nearly five kilometers in every direction, deep into the jungle. Other males hear the message and bide their time. Conflict is inevitable. The young challengers must one day fight for territory, mating rights and prey. And these jungles are rich in prey. The tiger's favorite is the sandbar. They're the largest deer in India, and one adult will feed a tiger family for a week. Visibility in the jungle is often down to a few meters. So sambar rely on other senses. They have an acute sense of smell. And ears that can swivel to pick up the slightest sound. The tiger's soft padded feet let him walk almost silently across the forest floor. At the first smell, sight or sound of danger, Sambar send out alarm calls and stamp their feet. Ambush is all to this solitary cat.
In Kipling's Jungle Book, the most feared creature is not the tiger, but the dole, India's wild dog. Dole live in clans of up to 40 strong. They are a tenth the size of a tiger, but they overcome this by hunting in packs. Communicating with barks, squeaks and whistles, they can bring down prey weighing nearly 200 kilograms. They tear into pieces, hastily devouring it, often whilst their meal is still alive. They've been said to attack and kill tigers. Intensely social play establishes a hierarchy within the clan, ruled by a dominant male and female. Only these two will breed. A little way outside the main group, a pair are setting up on their own. This is the only way that they will be able to mate and raise their own cubs. It's a high-risk strategy as they lose the advantage of pack hunting. It'll be difficult for them to make a kill. They begin their independent life by marking their territory, urinating in a quite unique fashion. The network of forest tracks allows them to move around easily and quietly, gaining the upper hand over the prey species. But hunting is never easy in a forest full of ears and eyes. A pair of ground-nesting lappings sound the alarm. They hound and mob until the dole move on. The calls alert other prey species. The lapwings return to look after their flightless chicks. monkeys feed on the fruit of a mahua tree. Chital deer take full advantage of not only the troops' messy eating habits, but their lookouts too. It's good to have allies in high places. A young dole couple spot potential prey.
With so many vigilant eyes, ears and noses, and without the support of a pack, hunting proves difficult. Early morning is peak feeding time for the jungle's many herbivores. Chital graze on the open grasslands where they're safest from ambush. Sambar mark out territories scenting the lower branches of the trees. Jack or barking deer are the oldest of the world's deer. Nilgai or blue bull are the biggest Asian antelope. Gar are the largest wild cattle in the world. Monumental blocks of muscle, they have few natural predators. They may look like American bison, but they're native to India. There have been stories of Gaur trampling villagers to death and even killing tigers. An alarm call alerts them. A young Chital deer stands her ground. Chital are faster than tigers. Unless he can creep to within 15 meters, a charge is pointless. The tiger continues calling for a mate. A young tigress lies up in a bamboo thicket. Not just to keep cool, she has a young cub. One in three tiger cubs do not survive their first year. Infanticide is the biggest killer. Male tigers kill cubs that are not their own, so ensuring that the mother will become receptive and mate again. But for now, this tigress and her cub 
are safely out of sight. Nearby, the curiosity and naivete of the two slightly older cubs make it more difficult for their mother to keep them hidden. The cub's boisterous behavior attracts the attention of a male. Male tigers may have several litters scattered through their territory. If these are not his, he will kill them. The cubs greet their father. He sent marks before settling down with them. This floor is thick with leaves. The recyclers are hard at work breaking it down. In the heat, mahua fruit ferments into a potent alcohol and langurs gorge on it. There then follows a scene familiar from bars the world over. They get drunk. Boisterous. Fight? And then sleep. Temperatures continue to climb, and so too does the value of water in the ever-shrinking pools. And with it, the power of the dominant male. Power has its privileges, and above all, mating rights. His calls have been heard. A young tigress makes her interest clear. The drive to find a mate goes on all over the jungle. (coughs) 
wide-eyed on hormones and surging testosterone, cheetah stags must battle for mating rights. To show who's boss, they pour the ground. Dig up grass with their antlers. And display, strutting side by side. But if that doesn't work, they fight. This male is in prime condition, but it's brutal work to keep this patch. The vanquished retreat to lick their wounds. To the victor go the spoils. But his rule may only last one season, even shorter than the tiger's. He moves through the herd, sniffing the air, searching out receptive females. But with all this activity, the cheetah's guard is down. Finally, an opportunity for the young dole pair to hunt. Rather than a fawn, they target a stag. Its escape hampered by its antlers as it runs through the thick jungle. like this will feed a pair of dole for a week. But to keep it, they have to be aware of tigers. Life and death battles occur throughout the forest. On every scale. An army of fire ants invades another colony. Gripping with their powerful jaws, they use their venomous sting to immobilize the opposition. This is death on a macro scale, but no less fierce or deadly.
Our dominant male from the main waterhole is still with his mate. Tigers, along with jaguars, are the only big cats that like water and will spend many hours lying in it, cooling off. This pair has the pick of the best places to bathe and do so brazenly. Deep in the forest, a younger male has also attracted a mate. But this pair must keep hidden and make do with a smaller pool. This water hole will soon dry up, forcing them to move on. But for now they can safely mate tucked away in the heart of the jungle. Our big male moves back into the shade, accompanied by his female. Tiger courtship lasts several days. A barrage of sound greets them. The cicada's love song is the loudest noise in the insect world. By clicking a membrane that is stretched along either side of the body, males sing to attract females. This creates the noise which is then amplified through their bodies. On each tree there may be hundreds of cicadas and many hundreds of thousands throughout the forest, creating a noise so loud it repels the birds that would otherwise prey on them. The females single out appropriate mates by pinpointing their unique song from this monotonous din. Cicadas feed by tapping into the fluids that run just below the bark. Extracting the sugar, they excrete the surplus liquid which rains down on the forest below. It's midsummer. There has been no rain for four months. There will be none for two more. The last of the leaves falls from the trees. This year's flowers shrivel and die. A colony of harvestmen gather in the shade of a tree to keep cool. There may be 10,000 gathered here. A female sunbird builds a nest from dry leaves, held together by spider silk. A pied kingfisher hunts in an ever-shrinking pool. Resting up in the water hole, our dominant male lies as still as a boulder. Alone again, his mating now over.
With the intense heat, tigers change their hunting behavior. Rather than stalking prey, they lie in wait by water holes, waiting for prey to come to them. Vanishing water forces both predator and prey together. The langurs wait for the tigress to finish cooling off before sending in a scout. Langurs are very much a part of the tiger's diet, so they're taking a big risk entering this water hole. One sentry always stands guard. Tigress returns with her cub. Then three more follow. She's three years old and this is her first litter. On average, a tigress will raise 12 cubs in her lifetime. Each will stay with her until they're two years old. For the mother, looking after four cubs is a tall order. For the first six months, she has to eat enough to produce milk. Then, for a further 18 months, she must hunt for herself and them. If she doesn't kill, it's not just her that will starve. Tigers rarely miss an opportunity to hunt. Perfectly camouflaged, she stalks through the long grass. The Chital herd is too far away to attempt an attack. Suddenly, there is a movement on the forest edge. Tigress with cubs is never off duty. Vice-like jaws suffocate the young deer. A small kill 
that will be quickly devoured. Late summer, still no sign of rain. Dry season is biting hard. All but the biggest water holes are drying up. With the water too shallow now, even for eels and catfish, the pond herons clean up. The few places available for drinking are thick with thirsty prey species. Some find comfort in the mud. This works as sunscreen and also provides protection from biting insects. <laughs> The lapwings are still working hard to defend their young. The large dole clam makes its presence felt. The young breakaway couple keep themselves to themselves. They want to avoid conflict with the clam at all costs. Pressure for water results in a fractious atmosphere. As the water holes disappear, more and more tigers are forced into smaller and smaller areas. is short but decisive. The challenger crouches down in a submissive posture, conceding defeat. The victor moves off to reclaim his territory. The calls of the peacock and the pitter announce the arrival of the rains. Just a few showers at first, but within days, signs of new growth start to appear. The downpours get heavier and more frequent.
the jungle is transformed. It's once again a place of plenty. Plenty of grazing for Sambar, Chital and Gar. Plenty of fruit for the Langurs. and plenty of prey for the tigers and the doll. The dominant male has held onto his position for another season. His mate is pregnant and will give birth in a month or so. The doll couple have not only survived their first summer on their own, but given birth to three pups. Their clan is now growing, and next year, hunting will be easier. What Kipling wrote in the Jungle Book was fiction. This is fact. And it's a story that has continued unbroken for thousands of years, every bit as miraculous and inspired. Mm -hmm.